Welcome back. We're going to take a brief break from the history of comics to thinking about how comics work. And today we're going to follow Scott McCloud's lead and think about representation, especially in the form of the cartoon. So representation is a word we use a lot, but it really means to represent the world around us or ideas or things. McCloud argues that there are three major forms of representation, pictures, symbols, and language. The icon, he says, is a type of picture, any image used to represent a person, place, thing, or idea. Pictures visually represent the world around us. Symbols represent ideas. They're pictorial, but very concise and to the point. Language can also represent the world around us, but it does so in a more abstract way. Now, the cartoon refers to a form of simplified picture. The level of abstraction and representation can vary from photorealism to very basic shapes. The cartoon is a type of icon which derives power, McLeod calls it amplification, through simplification. In short, as the image becomes more abstract or more iconic, it becomes more universal, to use McLeod's word. So a photo of Sarah Michelle Gellar, aka Buffy the Vampire Slayer, can only be one person, her. But as these different art styles, you can see, move to the right, well, by the time we get to the end, that picture could be of anyone. By simplifying shapes and colors, an artist is able to use cartooning to create images of characters that apply more broadly than a photograph or a photorealistic image. That brings McLeod to the big triangle. Now, the big triangle is a little obscure. It took me a while to figure out what exactly it was doing. The point of the big triangle isn't to have a neat place to categorize a bunch of different kinds of art, but to help us better understand how visual art works. Visual art, of any kind, not just cartooning, is pulled by these different sort of forces or aims. And those are the corners of the triangle. So what are these three forces or pulls on visual art? Well, on one corner, we have reality. This is the attempt to show nature. We have meaning, which is the attempt to show a concept. And we have the picture plane, which is an attempt to show form. Now, these edges are related to the kinds of ways that these points work. So reality, or nature, and form, images that are trying to express either of those, are deeply visual. And therefore, he calls it the retinal edge. Picture plane and meaning, or form and concept, these are really heady, brainy kind of ideas. So McLeod calls the line connecting those two the conceptual edge. Finally, he calls the line between reality and meaning, or nature and concept, the representational edge. This is because both nature and concepts are things that the image is trying to represent. Now, the dotted line for McLeod is the line in which pictures can no longer work, and we have to move into language or even more abstract forms of representation. Okay, so here's how we're going to make sense of this. Artists who are interested in the reality corner, in the pull of nature, well, these artists do sort of photorealistic art, maybe even photography. They really want their pictures to reflect nature. Artists working in the picture plane or form these are the sort of modern artists that sometimes people make fun of. They say, hey, a two-year-old could do that. Well, they're not trying to represent reality or any idea. They're interested in the way the form works. So this Jackson Pollock painting, for example, he's interested in the way paint falls and drips and the way that colors interact with each other. He's not trying to draw a tree. He's trying to say something about the form of painting. And finally, Artists working in conceptual edge, meaning. These guys are trying to show an idea. So Edgar Munch in The Scream, he knows that he's not drawing a person completely realistically, but that visual representation allows us to feel anxiety, terror, scream. So he's okay with it not looking exactly like a person or exactly like a bridge. He's more interested in something else. I have him not all the way over in the corner because we can still tell it's a person, it's a bridge. And that means that he's still representing reality to some extent. McLeod argues that as we get closer to this dotted line, there comes a point at which images can no longer represent the concept. 
we go down to these very basic symbols, things like the red circle with the line meaning no. Beyond that, well, we have to use something even more abstract than a picture, and that's language. The cartoon is pulled between all three of these, that amplification through simplification. Simplification is the experience of the concept. A very simple drawing is going to be trying to get in touch with concept, with meaning. That's why he says it's universal. Realism is the experience of the object. It's trying to make something look like something else. And the picture plane is the experience of the form. Cartoonists might want something to look like a person, but a really universal person, not a specific person. And that's where we get this sort of simplification and abstraction. Now, McLeod argues that most comics fall somewhere in this area of the big triangle. Here are some examples as I'm going along. Why is that? That's partially because of that pull between representation and concept. When you get too close to thinking about form, you stop worrying whether something looks like anything, and that makes it really hard to tell a story. Comics don't have to be narrative, but most of them are. And most of them want you to understand it's a person, and maybe even a specific person, a character, say Charlie Brown instead of Lucy. And so they need to represent nature or reality to some extent. But when they want to be more universal, they'll push over to the other side of the triangle so that they're more simplified. I'll just give you some of the examples he points to in a little bit more detail. So for example, this is much closer to that reality corner. We recognize these characters. They look like specific people. Likewise, in modern comics, you might think of Alex Ross and his more realistic drawing style. We also have the bones from Bone. Now these guys are practically anthropomorphized smiley faces. We can tell that they're humanoid, that they're some sort of character. We cannot tell their gender. We can barely tell them apart. They're much more conceptual. Alan Moore and Bill Sienkiewicz's series, Big Numbers, shows an interesting move up towards form. We can recognize the people, but Sienkiewicz is playing with the way that the ink splatters and whether we can tell the difference between a human and a blob of ink, whether we can understand the difference between, say, those typewritten fonts and the handwritten quotes in the word balloons. He's interested in representing things, sure, and it's simplified to a certain extent. But unlike some of the other guys, he seems to be playing with form at a different level. Jack Kirby, he's right smack in the middle. These we can tell are supposed to be humans, and yet they also don't look particularly human. They're simplified, but they're also sort of artistic and playing with lines and shapes in interesting ways. Now the big triangle is not necessarily meant to just be something that creates categories or for you to place somebody X, Y, and Z location. It's meant to help you understand and think about the way that different styles are trying to create meaning. Now you hopefully know a little bit more about visual representation and how it works, especially in the form of a cartoon. Next time, we're gonna jump into the gutter.